Welcome to the Totally Awesome Fishing Show. I'm here at Watmore Farm Fishery on a bit of an experiment with something I've never used before. It's called a chummer. I guess all you matchmen know about it. It's a float. Is that not the weirdest float you've ever seen? Basically, it's a swim feeder. There you can see that. With a bright orange cone there. And the piece of wire linking the two frames together. And a swivel that runs around it, loose like this. So you can imagine that basically it's a floating swim feeder and it distributes all the ground bait sinking slowly vertically through the water column as it hits the surface so it's floating not sinking no weight on it now wasn't quite sure how to fish here but i've rigged it up sliding down i'll slide this up first so you can see it was sliding up and down like that on a swivel and then i've had I've tried about four feet and i've gone to about 30 inches now of tray six pound line nice size eight carp hook I think that is but the first couple of three I missed and then Andy the owner came around and he said I'm always going to miss them because this feeder will slide back down the line anyway I need to put these two rubber stops one rubber stops not very good two rubber stops then it's carp safe should it break off and a carp snags up he can pull that and the feeder drops off so two little of those float rubber stops there and basically fill the feeder up with I've got every known piece of ground that I could find mixed up because I wasn't, I didn't have a great deal of faith in this float to be honest. But I know it works really. So I mixed up all my old rubbish bait, pellets and seafoods and everything like that. And basically, what they do is they fish with a banded pellet on it. And I've made up my own paste, good old ground bait paste. Because I figured this ground bait going in the feeder, I should try it. But the banded pellet is much, much more successful. I mould it around the hook like this, leave a little point showing, then fill the feeder up, let's put this up here for you, you can maybe see, fill the feeder up, now Andy was saying what he does, he puts ground bait in first, then a little you know, batch of pellets in there, then ground bait, so it's got different sink speeds going through the water column. I've got a mix of everything, obviously being me, but I'm not sure how hard to compact that. Too loose, it breaks up too quickly. Too hard, the system doesn't work. But the roach are liking it. I think now those roach are coming in, with a couple of small roach, the cart will follow. A few more casts, well, they tell me quite a few more casts to get that feed going in the same spot. And out there, I'm actually using a marker. It's a pylon reflection. And if you're casting for anything, always look for a solid reflection of something because that way even if the sun goes around the reflection still stays in the same place let's get it out there see if those roach come up on it I'm trying to get accurate like the matchmen do and get about the second bar up on that pylon but once the wind drifts it I notice it pulls it out of position but I assume all the ground bait is tumbling down anyway, so it must work even if it drifts out of position. I'm going to put my backup rod down the side here just in case this system doesn't work. Okay, now just look at the activity around this chummer float. You will actually see a tiny little bite in a minute, which is from a carp. But the roach are going completely sparkle over it. There's the bite. Oh, too late, Graham. You didn't know whether to strike or not. It was a mirror calm, late afternoon. It was perfect for using this float. Now then, here is a reflection, which is different from a shadow. A shadow will move as the sun goes round in the sky. Therefore, when it's moving, you'll be going to a different place all the time. With a solid reflection, you're in the same spot. Now watch the fry jump in a minute. There, can you just see that? That's a carp that swirled after the bait, and it spooked up. You'll see another one in a second. Just there, you just saw those fry jump. That's a sign that a carp has moved in and I got a bite generally within about a second or two of those carp going through. So, flat car conditions are good. I mean, you can allegedly use this float in windy conditions as well. I guess it sort of doesn't make any difference, but you've got to keep basically in touch with where you're casting to and baiting up that area for some sort of time. Here I am, I've eventually managed to hook something on that float. Well guys, let's move that camera there. After about 153 casts and half a bucket of ground bait, I've actually got one hooked up on this chummer float. The same principles when I was free lining before. 
you could see the small fish scatter and when they scattered that was the time the carp had moved in so that's a, a little pointer if I get this guy out anyway he's going for the rushes not a big fish but you know the method works Three pounds or something like that. But I was amazed, I think there's a bigger fish out there because this fry was scattering over a much bigger area. This one's fighting more in the net than he did on the run. Come down, oh boy, what is the point of what is the point in catching him if he doesn't want to appear on YouTube? There he is guys. Regulation car from Watmore. I feel another one coming but I've missed three bites as well. There's obviously something to this technique. Okay, here we go again. This is just to show you from a head cam point of view, I'm baiting up, you can use a, a pellet, you can use a maggot, you can use a worm, I guess you could use anything really. There's my bucket of ground bait, but remember, don't over wet ground bait because you can't take the water out once you put it in, but you can add the water if it's too dry. Just enough to well, lightly pinch in there. Listen, I'm no chummer float expert. I'm just telling you this is how I did it first time I tried. Now watch, here it goes in the water. This is quite interesting. There's my paste bait, goes in first, boom. In goes the feeder and look at it, absolutely rocketing out there. And look at the hundreds of little roach fry that are zooming and swirling all around there. No wonder those carp go nuts when they see that roach fry activity. Because let's face it, it's all competition. And with all that food tumbling out of the feeder, I mean, it's gotta be a method that can work under the right conditions and possibly in the right hands. Here we go, I'm aiming for that pylon reflection, not a shadow, reflection in the water, second arm up. Boom, right on the money, close the bail arm. I'm holding the line across my fingers because I do so much touch ledger and it's just pure habit. You possibly don't need to do that, but it's just my habit of fishing for the last 50 years is I can feel a tap or a take transmitted down that line. You're just going to basically keep an eye on that float and be prepared for a lightning strike. So here down at the bottom of the ground bait bucket is quite wet. You see when it's really wet, you squeeze it together, it possibly binds just a little bit too tight. It's quite a black art mixing up ground bait and getting it correct. There you can see the chummer float with those two rubber stops to stop it sliding back up the line, which was my first mistake I'd made. A nice even cast, just lob it out. Don't go for distance necessarily, go for accuracy. That is what catches matchmen so many fish. And of course I've got my sleeper rod just down on the right, laying on a little buzzer there. There you can see the roach. All I do now is add a carp. Well, I've lost another fish on the float on that chummer float and I've been seeing some tweaky bites on my free line uh, paste bait on the bottom which is a bonus so I've got a fish hooked up now it's a beautiful evening absolutely stilled off beautifully but long way out this fish is a long way out who knows on the size who knows lost about three today or this afternoon but it is quite a spectacular evening. Autumnal fishing at his best. Well, I say it's best when I've got the fish in the net, really, isn't it? You want to see it. It's a long way out still. It's actually finding very hard for a long way out and shallow. Could be foul hooked, could be foul hooked. Could be one of those ping slack liners. Don't know, it's unusual to be this shallow. But it's just boiled on the surface. So the big fish, or it's fouled. Doesn't have the head shakes for big fish. I don't think I'm gonna play with the camera too much, it's gonna concentrate. Doesn't feel fouled. 
haven't seen a lot of fish come out today. It's been a tough day. They had a match here. And I was hurt here in the corner. Weights are 20 pounds. Which is normally 120 pounds here. All right, let's get this around this rushes. Well, it's 3-2, or nearly 2, for the float at the moment. Oh, sorry, for the free line. So that five carp, got the fifth one on now. Man, it's been tough on this chummer float. Just not seeming to get the take. I know it's been a quiet day for everybody on the lake, but sort of disappointed with it. But, hang on, how big is this one? Come on fish, let's just see you, let's just see you. Fantastic evening. It's like a sheet of glass over there. God oh, man, this fish is absolutely hanging on big time. Try and get around the rushes. For a change, the net's actually right next to me. Look at the sun. Soon look at the fish though. Just will not give up. I'm playing it like it's got a hook a three pound hook link. out on the mat. Well, actually people, it is quite a bit bigger. Take a look at it. He's going to behave himself. There we go. That's quite a nice carp on the Avon rod. Six pound line and there's the chummer float just here. Look. So it does actually work, albeit I've had three free lining and not really fishing it, just leaving it for the rod to fold over and the rod rest or the buzzer to go. But this does work. I just think it's an off day, and who knows, it could even be me that I'm not fishing it properly. Apologies to all those chum floaters out there, the guys that know how to fish it, I don't, I just had to go with paste. But anyway, a couple of fish, can't grumble at that. I got a fish hooked up just after I cast out. Just saw the rod was folded. I think it's a big one, but it's on the free line again. Well, it was turning into a pretty good session. I mean, I'm not gonna say it was absolutely blinding fishing, but it was quite constant. And remember, even with pretty fish like this, they're just regular commercial carp water sized fish. I dare say a method like this could work on any water that's got quite a good stocking density of fish in there because you're dealing with the competition factor. 
another one's coming in ready for the net and OMG just look at that sun drop on the horizon Now that is a pretty chunky common carp. Great fish, great fight on the Avon rod. I wanted more. Guys, I'm in it, I'm in it big time. <laughs> you know the position, it's two. I wound the rod in and laid it in the margins when I fight what I think is a big fish out deep. I'm in big doo-doo, everybody else has gone home. This could well end a disaster. This one on the inside was down. Seconds, I wound it out of the way. You know when you hook a fish, I wound it out of the way. It's not a two pounder either, bizarre. Oh man, where's Michael when you need him? Other fish on the outside is a big fish, I think. This one's not small. Oh no. Oh god. Bloody hell, I couldn't look a bloody three pound. I could have got me moby dick. God, no, I'm not going to try and do this. A big fish, guys. I just. Ah, back line. Who told you to put the reel on back line? I know, around the other line, around the handle. Shit, shit, shit. It's the one out deep I want. I don't want to lose either of them, to be honest. I'm trying to get you guys a bit of film here as well. I'm not joking, this could be double doubles. It could be double trouble. This one on the inside ain't a small fish. The one on the outside is still 30 yards out. Just trying to keep the So there's one on the free line and one on the chum float. I wonder if I put this one with the rest with my foot on it. No, oh the rest is still in the water. Oh brilliant, oh that's superb. At least I can swear if there's nobody about. How am I going to get this fish in? Oh, Jesus. See, the problem is I don't want to give slack to this other one on the outside. Jesus. Look at the bends and rods. Oh, man. Oh, this is a nice fish inside. A ship could play. Come on, come on. Give me a break. Give me a break. I fear, the, I fear the worst guy. You can do it sometimes with a pair of five pounders, but. And I mean, this. Switch those two around. I can only act on the tail yours. I just want to get this one on the inside. He's so close, but he's, he's big and I can't. I can't get an angle on him. Right, here we go. Oh man, that's close to a double. <laughs> Holy cow, that's a big fish in there anyway. What am I gonna do? I'm trying to make you people feel. I am in such a mess. This guy's about 11. I'll try and get the hook out of it while I fight the other one. Right, hooks out of that one. Get the right out of the way. Keep the fish in the water. I can't mess with the camera too much. Here he comes, he's coming in. I'm coming in slowly. I've got to get my rub rest out of the water yet. Yeah. <laughs> I can't 
two in the nail. Two in the nail, one. Here's the fish. <laughs> what an interesting session. There's the mirror. See, that's a nice, a nice mirror. That was on the float. And this one, it's going to be naughty, I feel. It's defo a double, maybe 12, something like that. Fantastic. I'll leave them in that and carry them both back. I've got about eight minutes for one more cast. Look at this for a netful. Two at once. Both gone away. And I've got to go fishing again for my road rest. Probably come with a carp as well. Let's drop the driving glasses in. There we go. One more cast. Oh god, I've kicked the bait over. <laughs> 